Good morning. Good morning and welcome. This is Mr. B's Sunday School. I am Mr. B, also known as Bruce Ehrlich, and today we're here to talk about Nehemiah chapter 8. And uh, we're calling to today's lesson joy. So I'll have to smile when I say that, right? Um, so first thing we like to do in this class, though, is pray. Thank you, Lord, Father in heaven, for your holy word. Bless now the reading of your word. Open our understanding that we may change and become more like you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So to start with, we got a quote. Uh, this quote is from Greg Oden, American former professional basketball player. And he says, to meditate on scripture is to allow the truth of God's word to move from our head to our heart. It is to so dwell upon a truth that it becomes a part of our being. Now, i um, got a little bit of a reading for you. And this particular reading is from Nelson's. There we go. New Illustrated Bible Dictionary. And we're reading about Ezra, who's going to be in our story today. Uh, a scribe and a priest who led the returned captives in Jerusalem to make a new commitment to God's law. A descendant of Aaron through Eleazar, Ezra was trained in the knowledge of the law while living in captivity in Babylon with other citizens of the nation of Judah. Ezra gained favor during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia. This king commissioned him to return to Jerusalem about 458 BC to bring order among the people of the new community. Artaxerxes even gave Ezra a royal letter granting him civil as well as religious authority along with the finances to furnish the temple which had been rebuilt and returned by the returned captives. Ezra was a skilled scribe and teacher with extensive training in the books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Ezra led his countrymen to give attention to the reading of the law. Several priests helped Ezra read the law, translating and interpreting it for the people's clear understanding in their new language, which is Aramaic. This reading process went on for seven days as the people focused on God's commands. During this period, they also celebrated one of their great religious festivals, the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths. Um, we'll see a couple other names here in a minute. To, com to commemorate so that their uh, sustenance by God in the wilderness, they were sustained by God in the wilderness following their miraculous escape from Egyptian bondage. The result of this week of concentration on their heritage was a religious revival. The people confessed their sins and renewed their covenant with God. All right. We'll see how that works out here in just a minute. Our first reading is from the New Living Translation, and we're in Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. All the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord have give, had given for Israel to obey. 
So on October 8th, Ezra the priest, it says here October 8th was the seventh month of the Hebrew ancient lunar calendar. This day was October 8th, 445 B.C. Okay, there you have it. <clears throat> Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He, fa he faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. All right. Okay, we've got a reading from the Amplified Study Bible. And we're going to do a little reading from Deuteronomy. We had so much fun last week. We're going to read from Deuteronomy again this week. Um, this time we're in Deuteronomy 31, uh, verses 11 through 13. And it says... When all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, you shall read this law before all the people of Israel so that they may hear. Assemble the people, the men and the women and children and the stranger, resident alien, foreigner within your cities so that they may hear and learn the fear of the Lord, your God, with awe-filled reverence and profound respect, and be careful to obey all the words of this law. Their children who have not known the law will hear and learn to fear and worship the Lord, your God, as long as you live in the land which you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Okay, we got a little note here for you. It says, Because the Israelites had no books or Bibles, they had to come together to listen to God's word as read by a priest from a scroll. The laws were to be read to the whole assembly, including women and children. No doubt, memorization was important as a way of impressing the laws on the minds and hearts of the people. But it was not the end. The expected end result of hearing was obedience. Obedience to the Word of God is the only way that the child of God can please God in the new life. Okay. Got a little class note for you. Now we remember from the book of Ezra in chapter 7 that the gracious hand of the Lord God was on Ezra. Some versions say with Ezra, and that this was because Ezra had spent his entire life studying and obeying the law of the Lord and teaching it to others. A reading for you from an ancient Bible that I have. It's the Bible that I had when I was in grade school. And the reason that I like this Bible is it has little marks on names uh, so that you know how to pronounce them. So we're going to be reading verse uh, chapter 8, verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, and Shema, and Amaiah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Maaseah, on his right hand, and on his left hand, Padiah, and Mishael, and Malchiah, and Hashem, and Hashbadena, Zechariah, and Mishalem. Okay, I'm glad I kept this Bible. 
All right. Now we have a reading from the Tanakh. We call this Jen's Bible. Uh, my wife's best friend got me this Bible. It's, uh, it's a Hebrew Bible. It's the Tanakh. All right, there we go. We're going to read verses 5 and 6 here. Ezra opened the scroll before the eyes of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood silent. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen! Amen! With their hands upraised. Then they bowed and prostrated themselves before the Lord, faces to the ground. Okay. And we got another one of those verses that has a lot of names in it. So uh, I'm relying on this old Bible right here. Uh, we're in verse 7. It says, Then Jeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akab, Shabibathai, Hodijah, Measiah, Kelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Pelaiah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. All right. So I'm going to go back to the Amplified Study Bible. Study Bible is a good thing, by the way. Study Bible has notes. So we're going to look at um, verse 8, I think, is where we are now. So they read from the book of the law of God, translating and explaining it so that the people understood the reading. Then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. Then Ezra said to them, Go your way, eat the, re the rich festival food, drink the sweet drink, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be worried, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. A little note for you here. Once the people understood the word of God, they wept. They had heard the high standard of the law, recognized their low standing before the Lord, and were convicted. Weeping and sorrow for sin are part of repentance. But the other part of repentance is change. With change comes joy. The joy of the Lord is the joy that springs up in our hearts <clears throat> because of our relationship to the Lord. It is a God-given gladness found when we are in, are in communion with God. When our goal is to know more about the Lord, the byproduct is His joy. Okay. So now it's synonym time. Actually, it's synonym and antonym time. Here we go. Regarding the word joy from verse 10, where it says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, we like to close our eyes and imagine sometimes in this class um, pushing a shopping cart. And on one side of the aisle... You have shelves with synonyms, and on the other side of the aisle, you have shelves with antonyms, and you get to choose. 
Now, the word of the day is joy. So antonyms for joy include, and you get to choose, would you like these? Depression, melancholy, sadness, sorrow, <clears throat> unhappiness, and discouragement. Or you could choose what's on the shelves on the right side of the aisle. Uh, these are synonyms of joy, which include gladness, comfort, cheer, satisfaction, felicity, and mirth. Remember, you are the one who's shopping, so you get to choose. One of the most difficult concepts for kids in my class has always been free will. God has gifted the human race with free will, the ability to choose to do whatever we want to. The problem is people don't always choose what is best for them, and choices have consequences. But there can be no love without choice. God loves us. He gives us free will, and he hopes we will choose to love him. Got a reading for you from the Tanakh. Um, we're in Nehemiah chapter 8, at verse 11 and 12. And the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be silent, for this day is sacred. Do not be sad. <clears throat> so all the people went to eat and to drink and to send portions to the needy and to engage in great rejoicing, for they had understood the matters of which they had, the Levites and the priest had informed them. Okay. Now we're going to read from the New American Standard Bible. We're at verse 13. It says, <clears throat> Then on the second day, the heads of the fathers' households of all the people, the priests and Levites, were gathered to Ezra the scribe that they might gain insight into the words of the law. And they found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the sons of Israel should live in booths or shacks or uh, frames covered with tree branches during the feast of the seventh month. So they proclaimed and circulated a proclamation in all their cities and in Jerusalem saying, Go out to the hills and bring olive branches, and wild olive branches, myrtle trees, palm branches, and branches of other leafy trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on his own roof, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the square at the water gate, and in the square at the gate of Ephraim. And the entire assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and lived in them. The sons of Israel, indeed, had indeed not done so from the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, to that day. And there was great rejoicing or some versions say, great joy. And he read from the book of the law of God daily, from the first day to the last day. And they celebrated the feast seven days. And on the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly according to the ordinance. Okay. <clears throat> now, I know what you're thinking. Um... Festival of Shelters, 
Uh, actually, we have a reading first. We got a reading here. Uh, we're reading from Leviticus. And we're in Leviticus chapter 23. And we're going to read verses 33 and 34. And the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Begin celebrating the Feast of Shelters on the 15th day of the appointed month, five days after the Day of Atonement. This festival to the Lord will last for seven days. We got a little note here that says, it's also called the Festival of Booths or the Festival of Tabernacles. This was earlier called the Festival of the Final Harvest or the Festival of Ingathering. It is celebrated today as Sukkot or Sukkoth. Okay, so now you know. Um, oh, we got a little, yeah, there was a little note. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking, as I was about to say. Something along the lines of, okay, Mr. B, that's pretty interesting and all, but what possible application could this information about a Jewish festival where the sl people sleep outdoors in temporary, temporary buildings covered with tree branches have for me? I am so glad you asked. As a bonus reading, I have for you a vision a revelation of the future, and this is found in the book of Zechariah. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the Amplified Study Bible. Unbury it here. There we go. And we're reading from Zechariah chapter 14, and this is prophecy. And we're going to take a look at verse 9 and also a look at verse 16. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, the Lord shall be the only one worshipped, and his name the only one. And verse 16 says, then everyone who is left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and celebrate the Feast of Booths. And it says in parentheses, tabernacles. Yeah. Now, we've got a class roundup for you. In today's historical account from the book of Nehemiah, we saw how the people in Jerusalem were united in their request to hear and understand from the books of the law. The books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. After they had heard the word of God, their first response was sorrow and sadness. Upon their realization of their sins and their failure to keep God's word. However, the day of their assembly was a holy day, a festival day, and a day of joy and gladness. Later, we read how they obeyed God's word by keeping the festival of booths or shelters or tabernacles, as it's called. And wow, how they had very great joy in their obedience to God's commands. Now we know that God loves us and that he has given us his word so that we can experience joy in this life. So my advice to you is, do what the people of Israel did so long ago. Hear the word of God. Read it. Meditate on it. Think about it. Memorize it if you want to. But then, take one more step. Obey it. So that you too will have joy. Very great joy. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, God in heaven, for your holy word, help us to meditate on your word and obey it. We love you, Lord, and we ask for your very great joy. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a great week. <laughs>